Look, working through that migration data today, and it says to me that the Albanese government's efforts to rein in out-of-control immigration are about as successful as their efforts to control foreign criminals and to cut your power bill. Today, it emerged that net overseas migration for the September quarter, so that's the most recent bracket, was over 145,000. In other words, despite Labor's promise last year to get migration under control, it's running at an annualised rate of nearly 550,000 individuals. Now, that's on top of the all-time record of more than half a million newcomers in the last financial year. That's a city the size of Canberra coming into the country every single year on top of natural population increase. Since the election, the adult population has increased by over a million people. Meanwhile, home building completions are around a quarter of that. We are in a GDP per capita or family recession. The only thing left driving the economy is migration at a time when Labor's housing crisis is worsening. Why is this government taking our economy in the wrong direction? This record migration is happening at a time when wages are falling, real wages are falling, housing costs are skyrocketing, rental availability close to zero, roads and public transport are congested and heaven help anyone who needs to get into a doctor fast. Then there's the government's promise to have 1.2 million new homes built in the next five years, which is about as plausible as the government's promise to cut your power bill by $275. At the moment, we're lucky to get 100,000 homes built annually. Now, sure, we're a migrant nation, and just about all newcomers who come here one day are fine Australians. Apart from anything else, and like the politicians and the academics who hate Australia Day, most migrants know this is the best country in the world. But that hasn't stopped immigration becoming a racket. It's a dodge for universities and colleges that use overseas students as a cash cow. Even though many of these so-called students are just coming for work, they're after an immigration outcome in the guise of an education one. It's a soft option too for plenty of businesses who'd rather import cheap labour than pay Australians a decent wage to do unfashionable jobs or that don't want to train up our local kids. But most of all, sky-high immigration is a cop-out for lazy governments to keep notional economic growth up without any serious productivity reform. It's a Ponzi scheme. I've said that before, I'll say it again. It is a Ponzi scheme to mask a poor underlying economy by making the top-line growth numbers look better than they really are. For the past four quarters, Australia has been in recession in GDP per capita terms, so per head of population, even if we've avoided the technical definition of a recession. Across the board, poll after poll says Australians want a lower rate of immigration. Not no immigration, but numbers we can absorb. Numbers we can properly house and feed and employ without hurting the quality of life for those already here. Liberal voters want that. Labor voters want that, Green voters too. Green voters want this. The most recent Resolve poll showed that 62% of Australians thought migration was too high and a majority think that the government has run it in an unplanned and unmanaged way. After denying for two years that they have a problem with out-of-control migration, the Albanese government seems to have woken up to the political damage it's doing to them. So while they remain a big Australia government, they know with an election coming, they need to be seen to be doing something, even if they don't believe it. Which is why the government says that it's lifting the English language requirements for would-be students and short-term workers, and that it's asking more searching questions of anyone applying for a visa. But with almost 150,000 migrants in the last reported quarter, Plainly, what the government is doing isn't working or it isn't working fast enough. Even the 250,000 net migration figure that the government says it's working towards, well, that's more than double, more than double the average in the Howard years. Now, the government owes it to everyone who's already here to get these numbers down and fast. 
It's, it's another reason to sack the two ministers in charge, the clowns that have so mishandled the foreign criminals debacle, and to put in place a new team who will do what you expect and to act in Australia's national interest.